Hi there and welcome to our probability video series. This first video in the series is an introduction to the concept of probability. So to start off with, the probability of a given event happening refers to the likelihood that the event will take place. Let's have a look at some classic examples where we can talk more specifically about the possible outcomes for each. I'll run through them briefly first and then look at more extensive examples for each a bit later. We start with the coin. There are two sides to a coin, most commonly referred to as heads and tails. And so when flipping a coin, there are two possible outcomes. Dice, a standard dice has six sides with the numbers one to six on them. In other words, when you roll a dice, you have six possible numbers it could land on. If we consider a pack of cards, there are 52 cards in a pack, if you leave out the jokers. We will look at a pack of cards in more detail a little bit further in the video. What about a spinner? This will depend on the specific spinner. The one we have here has four equally possible outcomes illustrated by the four colors used. And finally, it is always fun to talk probability with all the different color smarties. It's probably worth noting that for all these examples, we assume no bias or uneven weighting. Before we get stuck into some examples, let's have a look through how we indicate probability. Probability values range from 0 to 1 or 100%, where the zero probability of an event occurring means there is no chance of it happening or that the event is impossible, all the way through to the probability of 1 or 100%, which indicates that the event will definitely happen or that the event is certain to occur. We can use any of these three options, fractions, decimals or percentages, to indicate the probability of an event occurring. If we go back to the idea of flipping a coin, you can see that the probability of getting heads, for example, would be a half or 0.5 or 50% because when flipping a coin there is a 1 in 2 likelihood of the outcome being heads, which means there is an even chance of this outcome. Let's have a look now at some probability questions. This first question asks what the probability is of tomorrow being Monday if today is Saturday. This is of course impossible, so we say the probability of tomorrow being Monday is zero. Next we're asked what is the probability that if today is Saturday, tomorrow is Sunday. This time we say the probability is 1 or 100% because the day after Saturday is definitely Sunday. Let's look now at the probability of getting tails when tossing a coin. There are two possible outcomes when tossing a coin, heads or tails, and so here we have a 1 in 2 chance which means the probability of getting tails is a half or 50%. The next question asks what the probability is of getting two tails if you toss two coins. In this case, there are four possible outcomes. They are two heads, heads and tails, or tails and heads, or two tails. In other words, there is a one in four chance of getting two tails when tossing two coins, which means the probability that you will get two tails in this scenario is a quarter, or 25%. Now let's consider a couple of questions regarding the rolling of a dice. What is the probability that you get a 6? Well, there are 6 possible outcomes when rolling a dice, and so the chances are 1 in 6 of rolling a 6, and so the probability is a 6th. What is the probability that you get an even number? Here there are 3 possible outcomes, a 2, a 4 or a 6, which means there is a 3 in 6 chance of rolling an even number, and so we say the probability is 3 sixths, which simplifies to a half. We could therefore also have said the probability is 50%. The probability that you get a prime number? Well, the prime numbers on a dice are the 2, the 3 and the 5. And so here we also have a 3 in 6 chance, which means the probability is a half or 50%. The next question asks what the probability is of getting a 7. Well, there is no 7 on a dice and so this is not possible. So the probability is therefore 0. 
This last question asks what the probability is of not getting a 6. There are 5 numbers other than a 6 on a dice, and so the chances of not getting a 6 is 5 and 6, which means the probability is 5 sixths. You can see from this example that the higher the probability, the higher the likelihood of the desired outcome. What about a pack of cards? Let's first make sure you're familiar with what is all in a pack of cards. There are four suits, two red suits, the hearts and diamonds, and two black suits, the spades and clubs. Then within each suit there are 13 cards, starting with an ace, then two, three, four, all the way through to 10, and then a jack, a queen, and a king. These 13 cards across all four suits make 52 cards altogether. A pack of cards may also have two jokers, but we don't consider these when working with probability. Our first question then, what is the probability of drawing a red card? Well, there are two red suits and two black suits, which means half the pack is red, which is 26 out of the 52 cards, and so the probability of drawing a red card is a half or 50%. Next, what is the probability that you draw an ace? Well, each of the four suits has one ace, the ace of spades, of diamonds, of clubs, and of hearts, and so there is a 4 in 52 chance of drawing an ace. The probability of drawing an ace is therefore 1 over 13. Then our last question here is what is the probability that you draw a spade? Spades are one of the four suits containing 13 cards, ace through to king, or two through to ace. The ace can play a low or a high card, by the way. And so 13 out of the 52 cards are spades, which means the probability of drawing a spade is a quarter, or we could also have said 25%. Let's move on to considering the spinner now. This spinner has four colors in equal portions. The probability of the spinner landing on red is therefore a quarter, red being one of the four colours. The probability that it doesn't land on red is three quarters, meaning it can land on any of the other three colours. And then this final question asks what is the sum of these two probabilities? A quarter plus three quarters is one, which indicates that these two scenarios cover the full set of outcomes possible with the spinner. We call events that encompass the entire range of possible outcomes in a sample space exhaustive events. And now for the Smarties. Working with the Smarties in the picture here, let's answer the following questions. What is the probability of picking a green Smartie? Well, there are 26 Smarties all together if we add up all the numbers of the different colors and one green Smartie. Therefore, the probability of picking a green Smartie is 1 over 26. What about the probability of picking a yellow Smartie? Well, there are six yellow Smarties, so a 6 in 26 chance of picking a yellow Smartie, which means the probability of this is simplified to 3 over 13. The last question is asking us what the probability is of not picking a purple Smartie. First, let's look at how many purple Smarties there are. Because there are three purple Smarties, it means that there are 23 non-purple Smarties, and so the probability of not picking a purple Smartie is 23 over 26. We will conclude this introduction video with looking at the definition of probability. The definition says that the probability of the required outcome occurring is equal to the number of favorable outcomes over the number of all possible outcomes. It can also be written in symbol form, where S is what we call the sample space, which refers to the set of all possible outcomes, like, for example, the 26 Smarties we just worked with. Then each element of S is what we call an outcome. So in terms of the Smarties, this would be each Smartie. E is the event, which refers to the specific set of outcomes in the sample space, like specifically the yellow Smarties, for example. 
And so the probability of the specific event happening is the number of that specific outcome over the total number of possible outcomes in the sample space. This definition of probability will play an important role throughout the section. Thank you for watching this video. Now that we have covered the concept of probability and introduced the definition, I'm sure you are ready to dive into the rest of the topic. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.